Imagine architects, engineers, and construction contractors meeting, presenting, and collaborating inside a BIM model, a space that does not yet exist. How is that possible? Stay tuned. Hi, all. I'm Dan Smigbrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, August 18th, 2022. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today. AEC teams meeting inside your BIM model powered by Superviz. And here to tell us about that is Russ Rive, co-founder and CEO of Superviz and Marcelo Franco, head of sales for Superviz. Hey, Russ, thanks for being back on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having us, Dan. It's always and a pleasure. And Marcel, thank you for being back on the show. Super excited to have you and learn all about uh, Superviz meets uh, uh, BIM and CAD files. Um, uh, Marcelo uh, or Russ, before we jump into today's demo, uh, how about a, just a, an overview of Superviz? Yeah, so with Superviz, uh, we create a tool that makes it really easy for you to virtually meet inside of 3D spaces. Uh, with a sense of presence as if you were there to have a productive on-site meeting, whether it's inside of a 3D BIM model, whether it's inside of a reality scan, whether it's inside of a 360-degree th uh, render. The idea is to create this virtual teleportation tool for productive meetings in remote virtual spaces. Yeah. Dan, you seem like you're having a little bit of a connection issue. Um, Russ, I'll, uh, let, I'll go ahead and ask you that a question again. Uh, uh, before we jump in to the demo in BIM and CAD, uh, tell, tell us about Superviz. Uh, well, the history of Superviz. So we, uh, the previous company that I had I'd founded um, was into remote automation of web services. And then we moved on to creating immersive experiences in the real world. Think of it as putting virtual layers of the real world. And then when, when uh, virtual reality came around again, we decided to really explore this a lot and try and create experiences. We can take the real world into virtual environments and make it easy for people to stimulate and, um, and simulate in-person uh, meetings as they were there together. So for, for today, we really want to explore the area of architecture, construction, and, and build-outs using Supervis as a way to remotely meet inside of projects in all phases of that from before you actually start building in the early design phases of meeting in a 3D model through to when you start rendering out the spaces to when you start doing scans of the construction to when it's finally done and presenting it. And just this whole ecosystem um, creating a really simple, almost if it was a, a virtual teleportation machine for, for, for productive meetings where being there together matters. Sounds awesome. Uh, yeah. What kind of, of spaces that don't exist are we going to visit today or perhaps what kind of file formats yeah so we have a, we have a couple of ones to show today um we're gonna we have a couple of integrations with supervis and we also have an sdk that's gonna be launching so people can integrate into any spatial content but today we'll start off with showing um a photogrammetry drone scan of an urban environment so you can meet in that using a sketchfab integration uh, and then from there we'll move into a a revit file so we can start having meetings inside of design phase of these projects which is useful to the architects, but also useful to bring stakeholders and even people that typically didn't participate early in the process, like plumbers and electricians, to try and create it, like really walk through the space and identify issues before the build-out starts happening. Um, then we'll get into 360-degree uh, renders. So once people agree on the space, we start rendering out these spaces. So also be able to meet and walk around these spaces rendered in almost photorealistic style. So you can sort of really get a feel of what it's going to be like. Again, remotely meeting inside of them. And then getting into uh, digital twins. So we, a Metaport integration allows us to then go and scan a real world place. It, maybe it's the construction that's, uh, that's ongoing that you want to remotely manage. Or maybe the, the apartment or the, the real estate um, location is finally ready and you want to sell it. So you scan it and then start having sales meetings inside of it. So we'll go through all these, this, this, this ecosystem, these steps of a, of a, of a construction phase. Uh, that, that sounds awesome. I, I believe one of the integrations that... Um... Superviz does is, is with Autodesk Forge. So it sounds like nearly any CAD file format that an architect or an engineer or design professional would use is supported by what you're about to show. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we did choose Autodesk Forge because it is compatible with so many different file types. So it currently supports around 60 different file types. It includes SketchUp, it includes Revit, it includes many, many different types of very popular 3D files. So it's as simple as just taking your, your project file, dragging it into the Supervis browser app. It'll render it out and you can start creating meeting links to meet inside of it. Awesome. Uh, take us through your demo. All right. That's okay. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen here. Um, one second. Let's see here. And while Russ is setting up, uh, uh, you can always go to superviz.com, S-U-P-E-R-V-I-Z.com uh, to uh, uh, do a 14-day free trial uh, or set up a one-on-one -on -one with a member of the Superviz team. Okay, I see your screen. Okay, great. Yeah, as you said, supervis.com is a great place to go and take a look there and see the integrations, examples of the things we've done. So what I've done here is I'm meeting with uh, Marcelo, who is also on the call with us in the, in the presentation. So I've, basically what I've done is very similar to, say, a Zoom link or a Google Meet link. I've generated that, sent it to him, and he simply clicks it and comes on in. I'll show you how to generate that in a bit. So the first integration that we're using here is an aerial drone scan um, that was then uploaded into a platform called Sketchfab. And through our, through our integration with Sketchfab, you simply put the share link of that model into Supervis and generate a meeting link. So you can see we can really walk around this 3D model of an urban Trying scale. To. And, and, and yeah. this could be- So, uh, excuse yeah. me, Russ, uh, for interrupting. Uh, it, it froze on my end. You were just about to say what kind of file format that we are in right now. Well, this is a it's a point cloud drone scan. So I'm not sure what the, what file format they end up using because Sketchfab also supports many different uh, formats. But basically, they uploaded the, fi the file to Sketchfab and that renders out the 3D image. And now I'm meeting inside here with, with Marcelo. You can see he's in here with me. Uh, we can have a regular web conference experience as you'd expect. But at the same time, we're in the space together. So I can see where he's pointing. I can, we can follow each other. Um, and I'll get into that more in the 3D model space once we get in there. But you can see his pointer as I move, say, uh, inside the model to a different spot. Say I want to go into a street here. If I say, well, come to me, I can say gather all. He'll pop up right next to me and he'll see exactly where we are. This becomes more interesting as I go into, say, the 3D model. So, so this is an example of us now meeting inside of a, say, an urban environment before we're even going to start the project. Just get an idea of where the building is going to be built looking around it. Um, so it's a nice way to get those kind of scans into the system. So while I'm in a meeting, I can actually change different types of uh, projects as well. So Bruce, let, let, let me know. just make a, make a quick comment here because I think people are only seeing your screen share. Uh, but from my side, so you guys understand, I have my own perspective. So while Russ is navigating through the project and having his way to look around, I can navigate freely and go to a different location. So I'm not sharing the same view that Russ is, is viewing right now. I have my own view and I can say, hey, Russ, come check this this construction site right here and he can jump directly to me. So I think it's worth mentioning that as well. Exactly, I can say jump to where Marcelo is and it takes me straight to where he is. And now we're looking at the same same location. You know, we turn the real world and these designs in almost a video game experience, you know, bring in the metaverse to the day-to-day -day productivity for getting things done in the real world and designing for the real world. Uh, so, so from here, I can take us, for example, now, let me take us to a uh, an example uh, Revit file. So I'm going to go ahead and load a Revit file now, and that will load for both sides. Uh, and you see that I'm in the meeting, I'm able to change projects so that I can create a new meeting. All my projects in my workspace are accessible to me in this meeting. So now it's nice loaded up the, the, the Forge viewer from Autodesk, and we're actually inside a 3D file together. So this is really cool. So now we're actually walking through this space together. I'm going to go and get myself into a first person uh, walking environment here so I can actually walk around the space and I, I can find Marcelo who is in here as well with me so say I go ahead and click on him so I can find exactly where he is uh, so I'll walk around and he's right here behind me probably let me see there's Marcelo so you can see he's in here with me and and as you can see this is a good example a good moment to point out of the custom avatars so you are able to go in customize your avatar make it look like yourself so it really adds again to this feeling of being there together but also we wanna make sure we keep the webcam because nothing really substitutes the webcam for body language, for ease of use, for understanding the, just the way we, we talk and use our hands and so on. So in the space, we have the avatars flying around with these laser pointers and be able to point out things. But at the same time, we have a very familiar web conference 
uh, experience. Um, and here I'm moving around as I would in any 3D model, you know. So which, it's interesting, we've got all the, the features from Forge as well here. So as we're walking around, um, I can invite, say, the electrician or the interior decorator and just have them come in here without have to be, they don't need to be architects. They can just understand walking around as if it was a video game. And it also includes all the BIM model information. So, you know, if I, if I select any object here, I have, I have the full properties of all this, all the objects here too. So we can really explore this at an architectural level and look at the different uh, properties of everything. And there's a couple of interesting features here. We can do things like measure, we can explode it, we can look at the layers, basically what the things you'd expect to see inside of a, a BIM viewer um, for your architectural files. So really cool here, it, just, it really turns it into a video game using your arrow keys, we can walk around the space. Um, I can do things like have Marcelo follow me, and this works throughout all projects. I can activate the follow me function. So what this does, you know, Marcelo has his own point of view. He can look where he'd like to view. But as I walk around, he's walking with me. So we can do a guided tour here. But again, it's not a screen share. He's not forced to look where I am. He can see my laser pointer as I can see his. You see how we see his mouse pointer with his name and the laser? He sees mine as well. So to me, to him, it looks like Russ with Russ's laser pointer. So if I point at the doorknob here, he'll know that I'm pointing at the doorknob and we can just discuss this. We can measure things. We can really discuss this project, walking around it together. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, well, there's many features here. Maybe I should just use this opportunity to go through a couple of the features inside of the inside of the tool. As you can see on the bottom here, we have a toolbar as well. That's, uh, that will appear in all the projects that Supervis is meeting inside of. The first object we have here is be able to change projects. That opens up my project menu on the side, and here I can change between the projects on the fly as we need to. So uh, easy for me to go ahead and say, oh, now let's take a look at the renders, which I'll do in a second. Uh, let's look at the 3D model. Let's go back to the reality scan. Let's compare the, the, the design of the 3D model to what's actually happening in the construction site right now and walk around that. Um, maybe bring the owner in who might be international to come in and actually go through this with us. Uh, the next button over is the record button. So what this, is, what this does is what you would expect it to do. Basically, it records our meeting. And this goes into my, my recording library, which I'll show you a second when we go into the back end here. Uh, it advises Marcelo, hey, Marcelo, we're recording the meeting. He's, he accepts, and now we're recording this. What's really nice about this recording is that it's recording my point of view of the entire meeting. So if we have change requests, if we point at things, if we make decisions, I not only have the voice and the webcam, but I have the context of the pointer and the mouse as well. So if I say to Marcelo, okay, let's talk about the the font on this door over here, he can see where I'm pointing, we can approve this, he can point at it, he can say yes, approved or no, let's change it. Uh, all this gets recorded, so it's contextualized recording of what's happening. And afterwards, I'll save this and send it to you, Dan, so that we can then uh, share it with everyone. Uh, and that just goes into the, the library. And the recording continues throughout everything. So if I'm changing projects, if I'm all that stuff, all that stuff gets, gets recorded. The whole meeting can get recorded and saved for later reference. The recording is ended and it's been saved for us. Um, and then we have classic video conferencing style tools that you'd expect. So, you know, the settings where you can choo choose your microphone, your camera, your speakers, all that kind of stuff. The setup's really simple. Muting, unmuting, turning on and off my camera, things you'd expect from the from video conferencing. We also have a chat, text chat here. So you can go ahead and chat, send messages. You can send web links, file links, all that kind of stuff. Uh, screen share. So we, even though we're inside of a 3D environment with video conferencing, I can also say, well, let me just bring up my, my, my PDF or my, my architectural software quickly, hit the screen share and be able to share my screen. Next up, we have the meeting link. So very easy if you just want to invite someone else. Maybe there's someone else that needs to come, uh, come into the meeting. You can take that, send it to them via email or chat. And they'll, they'll, they'll come in and then leave the meeting, of course. Um, inside inside the, the webcam side of things, if you take a look here, you'll see I have options to say follow, and I can choose to follow me or have everyone follow Marcelo. So as the host, I can choose that anyone can follow anyone in this meeting. I can even give control as host to someone else. If I also wanna go see where Marcelo is, so I say I'm, I'm gonna go and just go all the way over here, and then Marcelo says, hey, there's something interesting that I'd like to show you. To jump to where he is, I simply click on his webcam. It'll take me to where he is. You can see his mouse pointing is right here. <laughs> nice to see you too. <laughs> sure. uh, and. Uh, and then we're, we're in here together. So very easy to move around, uh, arrow keys to move around. So even if you're not an architect, so, excuse me, Russ, it, it, it actually yeah. did freeze there for a moment. And uh, 
when the show's being recorded, we'll pull all these segments out where it's frozen. Uh, if okay. if you could, if you could go back to uh, you were just uh, I want to say giving control to Marcelo. Okay. Uh, well, I was just showing all the options here in the webcam, right? Where I can uh, have him follow me, or or we can follow him. I can also give control to to Marcelo, which basically makes him the host. Uh, also, anytime if I want to find out where Marcelo is and what he's looking at, if he calls me over and he says, "Hey, come take a look at this," anyone can do this. If you just simply click on the webcam of someone, you'll jump to exactly where they are and see what their pointer is pointing at. So that is to make it really easy to navigate. You don't have to be an architect to navigate Supervis. You can call in stakeholders like designers, plumbers, electricians, the guy that's going to fabricate the stickers on these doors. You can bring them in and say, look, this is what I'm thinking. And they would just use the arrow keys. You can just activate the follow me and they can also have an immersive experience. So we find that customers also like to use this tool to include stakeholders and, 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 and vendors early in the process that typically only start getting involved later so they can catch these, these ideas and, um, and issues early. Uh, so let's keep going here. So we this is it. so we've gone from the urban drone scan 3D and Sketchfab into a, an Autodesk uh, Revit file. Well, Revit file imported into the Autodesk Forge. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, go to the next thing. So let's say we want to watch the renders of this environment. So let me find a project here that has the 360 renders. Uh, let me see where that is. The there you go, uh, the Parkside Parkside Carvoera. There you go. This one here, there you go. Yes. So, so now we have the 3D model going. Now we're ready to start doing realistic renders of what the space is going to be looking like. So this is a full 360 tour creator where you can upload renders, floor plans, hot spots, all that kind of stuff. So you can see it loads straight into the floor plan. I'm going to go ahead and jump straight in. And again, this is all syncing with Marcelo. As the host, I'm controlling the experience. What you're seeing is happening on my screen. It loads the same environments for him. And he has a, his, his own point of view to look around. So now we're now we're meeting inside the 360 degree render. So we've gone from the from the Revit or the SketchUp or the whatever CAD file you're using into the, the 360 render as the project's moving along. We can start really getting a feel for what this project's going to look like. Uh, and this phase, we can start doing things like adding hotspots. We can start doing you know walkthroughs. For example, here another button appears on the bottom here uh, where I can go and view the other scenes. That are inside the scene so I can open up all the scenes and do all the walkthroughs um, if I want to go back to the floor plan uh, jump through from the menu here uh, I can also I think this is even the integration with street view one second yeah. let me just load up here we also have integration with Google street view so if you want to you can go straight to the address as well so straight from Google's environment you put any address in we can meet on the street outside to see what this environment is looking like you know so Really, really easy to teleport to these places and walk around. Um, so let me jump back into, into one of these spots over here. We'll go back in where I was. I'm going to go ahead and click here. Uh, I can also activate the edit function. Now, the edit function allows me to, as the host, edit this in real time in the meeting. So I can do many things with this. I can say add a hotspot. Now, adding hotspots allows me to add many different overlays on top of this 3D render. So I can go ahead and say, Add an image, which will make it all image hotspot, which will open a window, a link that then would open up a web link, open up a new tab, maybe take me to a PDF of a floor plan or a specification, or maybe even a option. Excuse to me, Russ, I, I apologize. Yeah. We froze again. Uh, and uh, I apologize to our audience and, and to you. I, I think we have so much different technology going on with the, how we do We Get Around Network, WGA and TV Live at Five and the BIM models in different countries. Um, if you could, is you were you had, you froze just when you said, and you can edit. Okay, so I'll get back to that. So you can see once we're in the three sixty degree render, we can also activate the edit mode. You see, there's a little slider over here where we activate the edit mode. Now, edit mode lets us add scenes, change scenes, add portals, walkthroughs, but we can also add hotspots. So hotspots are basically pins that we can place, tags that we can place around the scene that then we can open up different types of media. We can add images. So it'll just open up a window with a different image. Maybe it's a, a close-up render or a photo of a reference. Uh, web links, that'll open up a new tab for someone. And that could link to cloud drives with PDFs. It could even link to a checkout for a product if they would like to buy it. 
basically any web link you can go ahead and put inside of that. Text notes, audio recordings that I can drop in or record on the spot, add a video as well. So it'll open up and play a video. Maybe it's an intro video that I'd like people to see in the space. Um, and then scene is to create these portals that you see here. Uh, and portals is what you expect them to do. They basically walk through, whether arrows on the floor or if they're up in the, up in the sky, it's because it's more of a, a sphere of the next room and it'll take you over to the next place. So this is a built-in feature for Supervis to be able to upload custom 360 degree renders and build a really walkthrough experience and host meetings inside of that with the other people. Um, so let's keep going. So when, now that we've done the, the, the Sketchfab integration to be able to see uh, drone scans or any 3D model, we've gone through the, the, the CAD model, we've gone through the renders, and now let's take a look at what the project looks in the real world. And so this could be, uh, this could be for either to, to monitor how the construction is going. So maybe some of the ongoing and you want to do reality di digital scans uh, of, uh, of the environment, creating a digital twin. In this case, we've integrated with a, a platform called Matterport, which is probably one of the leaders in this area where it's really easy for you to scan it. Or even, even you can ask service providers to go out and scan for you if you'd like. Um, and so let me bring that up. So, so now we're just jumping straight into a reality capture. That was uh, the Matterport platform was used. And so we can go into the reality. So again, this could be the construction. So you can do a remote construction site management. In this case, the apartment's already ready. And we're walking through a Matterport tour now. And you'll see Marcelo is here with me. As we're walking through this environment, we're walking through and discussing it as if we were there together. So really, it's really getting all the phases of what you would do in the property development, real estate, architecture space. From the design, early design through to rendering, through to sort of aerial scans, meeting on the streets, through to actual scanning of the reality. Supervis is a tool that lets you go ahead and, and really meet virtually in all these places as if you were there together. You know, so to say, the idea is taking that, the idea of Matterport, but bringing it to real day, real day usage, production, productivity um, tool, right? To get things done. So I, I think, Russ, that's probably a, a good, uh, you started to show Matterport, uh, you were on the show, uh, you and Marcelo were. Yeah, I think he froze again. Um. Uh, there's a search box just put in Supervis and WGAN hyphen TV, and uh, you'll call up that show. Um, uh, Russ, thank you for that 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 demo, and Marcelo uh, adding your uh, commentary as well. Uh, what's the sweet spot for Supervis plus BIM or Supervis plus CAD? Um, there's many use cases. I mean, maybe Marcella, you would like to talk about a couple of the real, real world cases that you've had customers sure. use this for. Sure, sure, of course. So, uh, as an example, let's say for a real estate developer that we have some practical use cases. Uh, it's even on the Matterport website. One of the use cases we've done with the company, uh, they can use the supervis to discuss any, like all the stages of the construction. So what they did, uh, starting on the pandemic, when they couldn't meet anymore in person, they they had to keep going. They had to keep building uh, all the, the buildings that they, they used to do. And they used Supervis to start to get people collaborating remotely. And they saw how powerful that would be. So what they do today, they start using Supervis on, on, on BIM models, on 3D CAD models, and they, they upload different types of files. So FBX, IFC, uh, GBL, I think it's the other one as well. And they bring everyone together in the meeting and they start to talk about everything that is working or not inside the model. Uh, after that, they have the 360 renders where they can document everything from the construction. So they upload through our hotspots all the, the, the technical assets that they need into hydraulics, electrics, and everything that they need. So even the, the people from the construction side, they can hop into a Supervis project because they have a license to hop in there. And they can check the, the, the documentation while they are in the construction and even call a meeting if necessary to discuss anything with someone that's in the office. They don't need to call them in. The, the, the spot or they don't need to drive there. They can simply jump into a meeting and discuss the project. 
And the next stage, they use the Matterport uh, feature to, to see how the construction is going. So they do all the management of the construction using Matterport. And at the end, they use uh, Matterport, like a digital twin of the, 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 the apartment ready as it is uh, to show clients and prospects and everything. So it's pretty interesting. So while and, you were going through that example, Mar- Marcelo, I was kind sure. of checking off what, what some of the, the, the benefits seem to be. So, uh, uh, and hopefully we'll be in a, a post COVID world here. Uh, but that said, I, I think what I was hearing, uh, saving airline tickets, because all those people didn't need to fly. So that was saving airline tickets and hotel rooms, so uh, a large savings in terms of travel. Uh, I was also hearing that it was possible to collaborate quickly by meeting up virtually than figuring out how to coordinate everybody's schedule to meet up in person. Um, Are there other benefits that come to mind uh, of using Supervis plus BIM? Well, well I can the, speak to the one. Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, sorry. Let, let, let me just bring one up from the same the same client that we have. Uh, so what they did, uh, it's something that like we can measure a certain amount of savings, but it goes a lot beyond that because th- there's a there's a theory in, in civil engineer that it shows that the most recent stage you get a, a, a failure or maybe a, a mistake in the in the project. Uh, during the construction phase, the cheaper it will be to fix it. So uh, some fixes that they usually find during the construction process, it would cost them, I don't know, 5x. But now that they are finding the issues, meeting inside a BIM model with even before construction, during the, the modeling stage, they are saving tons of money because they would, if they do that after the, the, the building is delivered, for example, they would spend 125 times that issue to be fixed. So uh, the savings came up to $15 million a year, uh, including on 20 uh, buildings that they used for the research. So uh, the ROI is like impressive. It's like a 400% ROI with everything like Supervis, uh, Matterport, camera, uh, beam modeling, everything, like all the assets they need to turn that into a virtual a virtual collaboration tool, it brought a ROI of 400%. So it's pretty, pretty impressive. So I'm, I'm hearing- I think it was uh, like 400 times actually, Marcelo. It, was like, it wasn't just 4X. It was, it was oh, yeah. quite ridiculous. It was, it exactly. was like 400 times, the, the, not 400%. True, uh, true, it, true, it was, true. The, the numbers almost look surreal. So we, we ended up diving into it. And it's just the idea that um, you can start calling people that are going to be working on the project into the design phase much earlier and catch these issues in the CAD phase, uh, where they were previously caught in the actual putting cement on the floor phase, you know, yeah. and so that this cost savings is just so huge. Yeah. So I, I think what I'm hearing is uh, rework, which, which is a big bugaboo in the construction space, yeah. uh, is a tremendous opportunity to save a ton of money, probably a ton of frustration, uh, is if you can catch it in the BIM model, Versus, uh, I, I guess, Russ, you, maybe you're you're collaborating in the BIM model and you see, oh, we thought that wall was going to work there. Right. But now that we can see the sight lines as we're walking through the space, we see that there really is a problem with that wall. So if you could catch not putting that wall there or removing that wall is way better than when you're pouring the cement or after it's been constructed. Yeah, because previously what would happen is the architects use these CAD tools, right? And maybe the maybe a couple of engineers, but there's so many more people involved. There's so much more specialists, like someone that really knows carpets or someone that really knows air conditioning ducts. They're not really that involved in that stage. And so sometimes these things don't happen. So you can start calling people that typically weren't dealing with the, the, the CAD file to really early stages to get their inputs, to get ideas on how to optimize. Um, and that, that's, that's, that's the real value. And, and, and I, I want to frame that for a second, yeah. Russ, if I may, yeah. because I, I think yeah. what I would call that, because I, I, I'm, I'm a visual person, at, but looking at a, a, a blueprint or a floor plan, I simply can't visualize things. And my yeah. impression was if you could send a link to, to that floor person or that air conditioning person, it, it, it wasn't, it's not hard. It's super easy. And it's, it's yeah. just what you do every day. You just, you click on a link and now you're 
immersed in a space and you're walking through the space and you can right. literally see there's there's a problem where you put the air conditioning, but I couldn't see that looking at a blueprint. Exactly. Exactly. You, you nailed it. It's just this idea of having immersive, personalized on-site experiences inside of the design phase with all these different stakeholders and vendors is, is just a huge value add. And, and just the basic value that you normally get out of, out of video conferencing, you know, being able to be anywhere, anytime, but brought to 3D space. Uh, I apologize. You, you, no you finished your sentence, which which was a huge value add. Yeah. And you, and you were saying. Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure exactly where, where it was cut off, but the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll we just bring in the, the, just the general value add that you normally that people are already experiencing through video conferencing, which was a huge leap in productivity without having to travel. We're bringing all that now to the lost frontier, which is the physical world, the 3D space. You know, really take bringing that to environments of design and real world locations. Uh, so take all that advantages. The, the place that you, that you you could use video conferencing, except when you really had to be there together. Now you can do that, too, in virtually. Well, maybe you could speak to that a little bit. I, I would imagine uh, during the pandemic, a lot of people moved to Zoom and were sharing their screen. What What's the difference right. of using Supervis plus a BIM model uh, and video conferencing ver versus Zoom plus uh, sharing your desktop? There's a very big difference between uh, watching a video on YouTube and being somewhere. And so sharing a screen is very much like watching a video. You can only see where the camera is. The camera moves too fast. You didn't quite pick up on that. But if you're a specialist and you can look around wherever you want, it gives you that freedom of you get a feeling of being there. You really feel the space. While you, you can look anywhere you'd like to, you can stop the camera wherever you'd like to. The, it's, it's, it's night and day. The, one, one is watching a video of someone that's, that's guiding it and maybe even hiding something. You know, a salesperson sharing the screen is choosing where to look and not to look. <laughs> so freedom to look around uh, is, is a, is, has nothing to do with screen sharing. And, and, uh, and, and be, before we move on to a back-end demo, I just wanted to ask a, a little bit more just on benefits. I, uh, saving money, saving time, reducing uh, uh, rework, maybe saving frustration, uh, perhaps yep. having an easier time collaborating. Are, are there other benefits of Superviz plus BIM? Well, it, it is a superpower, you know. So it, it, all of a sudden you have this power to be able to call someone into your design and meet inside of it. Uh, it just opens up almost a new way of thinking about remote collaboration. Whereas previously, this was the one place you couldn't really be there together. Now we're, we're bringing that to, to even that aspect of meeting inside these, these spaces. And along with that comes you know, all the advantages and cost savings and things you'd have from, from video conferencing. But at the same time, all the advantage and cost savings you have of productive meetings inside these spaces that can catch problems early, that can catch good ideas early and have them incorporated. So it really the, the domino effect of all those advantages just really adds up. And and, and where did all this come from? I mean, I, I mean, we're looking at this amazing experience of of Supervis meets BIM meets CAD meets Matterport. Uh, what what was the the impetus? How did how did you end up here to, to today? <laughs> well, it's, 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 the, the vision actually for Supervis has been pretty consistent since the beginning. It's just what it's become and how we how we found our way through the world is is a is a, any company starts. It's just a, a it's a, a series of iterations on customer feedbacks and just going along and really building something that someone wants. Uh, it started out with the idea. Well, it's the the the, the birth of Supervis was with this with the second coming of of VR a couple of years ago, maybe five six years ago. Uh, we had a lot of experience of creating immersive experiences in the real world. And then we saw uh, the opportunity to bring uh, the real world into the virtual using virtual reality. And so we created a very simple application at the time. It was an application in Unity that we built to like put a, a photo sphere into it and meet inside. And the idea was that let's quickly build an app and see what it feels like and put it on a network. And it actually felt, I mean, it doesn't feel like you're there, but it was 70% real. You know, we had it on, it, was a, it started as a VR application. It was a VR application. And so we're like, well, that's pretty powerful. Um, and so Supervis went from VR, 
then we realized, well, we're too ahead of the time that people aren't really buying the VR goggles. And for everyone to have to have VR to be able to use Supervis would really limit us to be able to help as many people as possible. Uh, so we rewrote the entire thing to, on WebXR so it can run in a browser. So now there's no software to download. You literally, it's like a Google Meet link. You send it to someone, it loads the platform, it loads the content, loads the avatars, loads the browser, loads the, loads, loads the webcams. Um, and you look at Supervis now, it looks like, yeah, that's what you always thought it would be. But the incarnation is a series of iterations and feedback loops to where we are now. Uh, and the future from here we go, we still, our, our end vision is still the same thing. The idea that you really can be anywhere virtually with people with a sensation of presence. To, but at the same time, always with the idea of to learn something, to solve something, to produce something. We're not trying to recreate the social experience. You know, so people talk about the metaverse. Most people talk about this idea of escaping reality to have social experiences in the metaverse. We're, we're, we see it as like, let's bring the advantages of metaverse to the real world, get things done so we can go out and socialize in the real world. <laughs> well, it is, it is interesting lo looking at your demo because I, I, I feel like um, it's the book that I just finished reading. Oh, there we go. The, yeah. the metaverse. And it sounds like Supervis. Uh, meets BIM, meets CAD, meets Matterport. So, yep. uh, uh, the technology, uh, I'm not a, a tech person. I'm kind of geeky, but it sounds like I can use Supervis uh, on a smartphone, tablet, laptop, desktop, and VR, yep. and not load any software. It runs all in the browser. It runs all in the browser, exactly. So you can run it. Uh, the VR experience, we haven't really put much effort into recently just because the usage has been so low. And because it's such a productivity app, people want the keyboard, they want the mouse, they want the webcams, which is really something that the headsets are not there yet. I mean, uh, the idea is that all these devices, as uh, you know, the future vision of Supervis is that it's compatible, whatever, whatever these devices are, we want to bring this experience to them. And so we'll keep developing on it. Um, as an example, we're, we're releasing next week, by the time this is out, it's probably already been released, uh, the Supervis SDK. So that's going to allow any company with spatial data to be able to integrate Supervis experiences into their tools. September 2022. Yeah. So, exactly. Okay. So that's really, that's really exciting. It's become, we become the back end for returning any single player 3D experience into a multiplayer virtual meta, meta, uh, metaverse experience through a very simple SDK. We want to enable people to do this in their platforms. Just to ask you one more question about the devices before we move on to a backend demo. Uh, uh, I think of uh, Revit files as being big files. CAD files can be pr pretty, pretty big. Um, yeah. yeah. If you're running it on your desktop, I kind of get it that that works. But if I'm on a smartphone in the field, is, is there a, a thinner level of data that's being pushed <laughs> so that my phone actually works? There, there. Okay, so the, firstly, we integrated with with Autodesk Forge just because they do a really amazing job at at making it run in a browser, right? So they, there's a lot of black magic that they're doing that just simplifies the model and makes it running. However, if, if, if you take a highly detailed rend, uh, model of the Empire State Building with all the pipes and all the bathrooms and all that stuff rendering, it's, it's not going to work. You know, it's not going to run. So typically what people do is we have a, we sort of limit it on a file size, which is a rough estimate on the size of what, what the render is going to be. Um, we want people to export the pieces of the puzzle that they want to discuss. And so we want to optimize it. But in general, if you're saying you're doing a, a single person, uh, single family house or you saw the ones we showed today all that kind of stuff runs really smoothly on any device yeah i was so, just saying that it so, runs i'm so sorry russ we, we froze again i <laughs> yeah, uh, no and i and i believe it's on my end it must be raining out uh yeah. uh so if we could pick it up at uh what, what I'm saying if is, I'm in the field really and I'm job. using an yeah. iPad. Can, yeah. can iPad's I? iPad's amazing. Like, if you do, if, like any reasonable model, if you're doing, say, a, a single family home or any of the models we showed you today, any of that thing on that scale is going to run super, super well on, a, on, an, iPhone, on a, an iPhone, an Android, a laptop, an iPad, a tablet. That's no problem. Um, 
think think of uh, like if it runs on your computer and it's not a not a super fancy computer, it's going to be fine. If you're an architect that has a monster gaming machine to run your model and it only runs on your computer, we're not going to be able to do magic and then make that run smoothly on an iPhone. <laughs> you know, so keep that in mind. So typically, what people do is they would export parts of the model. They'd say, okay, we really want to discuss this floor of this building, so they'd export that, put it into Supervis, and have a meeting inside of it. Bingo. Let's take a look at the back end. So uh, if, if you yep. could maybe share. So I'm just trying to understand. Uh, OK, well, we experienced the front end, but how how is how are you making the magic happen uh, to share a space yep. as a SketchUp file, a Revit file, a yeah. uh, whatever CAD file it is? Well, well the, the good news is there's hardly anything to it. It's it's really, really simple. So here's an example. I've logged into an account in Supervis, and here's my dashboard. These are the projects that I've imported, and I'll show you in a second how I import the projects. Um, I can have different workspaces. Normally, people will just have the one workspace. Uh, and then down, I'll just go down the menus here. So you have your projects. Then you have your team management. So you have multiple people that can come inside. And these are basically people that can host meetings. So you, can they add people? Can they manage projects? Can they just host meetings? Um, you come into your recordings, so you can see all the recordings that you've done through these meetings. I'll see all the recordings I've done. Marcelo will see the recordings he's done. Admins will see the recordings everyone's have, have done. Um, and so here, here we go. Here's uh, the one we just did earlier today. So it's, it's just very simple. I can just go ahead and click play, and you'll see here it is. Here's the recording we were doing earlier. So it's already already in my dashboard. Um, and you can export that as a MP4 file? Yeah, I just download here and it goes right down. So I can edit it, I can highlight it, I can voice over it, send it to my customers. I can also actually just share it straight from here. I can say share, make this a public link. So I don't even have to download it. And I can send this to a client and they'll just copy this link and they'll be able to click it and run it as if it was a YouTube video. So anyone, it's. It, no one's going to guess the URL because it's got a very encrypted URL key. So, but so it's pretty safe to send out. It's not like you can search for them, and you can share it with anyone. Um, and then the last one is the settings here, and this is just my my uh, workspace settings. You know, in this case, it's called Projects Demo. Uh, and then also, what I can do is on the other side, if you take a look at my profile, this is where I can see my profile, change my name, and so on. I can edit my avatar. This is kind of fun. I can go in here. In this case, is the avatar I was using. You guys didn't see my avatar because you were looking through my eyes in the demo, but this is what I looked like to, to Marcelo. You can go ahead and edit that and change my shirt, my eyes, my hair color, all that kind of stuff. So you can go ahead and edit your avatar and how you'd like to experience it. And then it's the logout. But most of the time you spend is in the dashboard home, which is what we have here. And so these are the projects that I already have created in my in my dashboard. Now to add a project, again, it's it's really, really simple. You just click Add Project. You choose what is the type of project you'd like to add. You know, Matterport, Sketchfab, a 3D CAD model, a 3D tour builder where you can put your, your renders. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to add a Matterport file, I would just copy the link of, the, of my Matterport project and I'll be able to send it in. Uh, or I could say Sketchfab, same thing, copy a link. 3D CAD model, I would just drag it in. You can see here uh, we have credits for that because you have to uh, convert them, but it's many credits. So typically people don't uh, go past these credits. Um, and then the last one is to create a 360 degree render tour and I'll give it a name. And then I, from there, I can go ahead and drag my, uh, my 360 renders from my desktop straight into the project, start adding the links and do that stuff that I showed you. So, so really simple. And then they appear here in your dashboard. So I've already added here a couple of them. Here's the city we, we were seeing. Um, the floor plan with 360 renders is this project. Say I want to create a meeting in any of these. Uh, let's just go on this first one. I just say, click on the on the webcam, start an instant meeting. So it'll just create a meeting on the spot. You'll see it'll start up. It has the meeting here. I copy the link. I send it to someone, and we're in it straight away. Uh, or I can say, let's start it for later. This is nice if I want to schedule a meeting. It just generates a link for me. I copy the link, send it in the calendar invite. The person clicks it. And again, the person that receives this link doesn't have to know anything about Supervisor. To them, the experience is the same as joining a video conference. It'll come in, it'll say, give access to, it'll look like they're joining a Google Meet meeting, um, and then it'll be in the meeting. Um, and then there's the last, last feature here, which is a, a pro feature, which is to create broadcast meetings. Now, typically our meetings, if it's just a regular meeting, we support up to 16 participants, which, in, which means 16 avatars, 16 webcams, which is a pretty large meeting for an on-site meeting. 
you know, typically people don't have 16 people on site meetings, but we let people do up to 16. But there are use cases where someone might want to, like what we're doing today, we want to broadcast to many people. Maybe it's an internal company presentation. Maybe someone would like to show the project to someone else or a whole team, but they want the idea of a presenter and, a, and, a, and an audience. So in the broadcast meeting, um, what that does is it creates two links, right? And one, one link is to the participants, the presenters, and the other link is to the audience. And so what that does is the, the, the presenters click in the link, they get webcams, they get avatars, and they walk around. The audience, they come in, they don't get webcams or avatars, but they have the same first-person experience as anyone else. They can move around so as if there were ghosts in the room. They can move around the room, they can look at things, they can walk around on their own. But the host can activate the follow me, the host can say jump to, and so all those up to 230 people can be walking around as invisible participants inside of this meeting. So even the audience have their own point of view. They also download the model, they all can look around, it's as if they were ghosts in the room walking around. They can all communicate in the chat, so if they need to ask something or do something, everybody's in the chat. But that broadcast mode allows you to present a supervis meeting to up to 230 people, which is a pretty exciting feature that we that we just released. Um, I mean, and that's it. That's pretty simple. So basically, you you add your projects to your dashboard, click create meeting, send the leading link, and that's it. You come on in. On the on the broadcast, uh, I believe I heard up to 230 in the audience. How many presenters? 16. So 16 always 16 You presenters. could have up to 16 presenters and then everyone else can be looking over the shoulder. Exactly. And presenters get webcams and avatars. Exactly. Okay. Is there anything else on the back end that you wanted to show us? That's it. It really is uh, pretty simple. That's pretty easy. Okay. That, that's awesome. Um, hmm. are, are there features that are coming soon that you wanted to talk about? You talked about the, the uh, Supervis SDK uh, will be yeah. released in September to 2022. That will enable other companies to integrate the Supervis experience within their solution. Exactly. There we go. Yeah, I was saying the, the, the roadmap, right? You were asking about the roadmap. And so, uh, yeah, the SDK is the big release we're doing now. Uh, the avatars just came out, which is really exciting. Um, and so uh, we also have a couple of interesting things happening along the lines of total custom branding, white labeling. So if there's larger customers that would like this to be under their domain with their brand, uh, maybe um, service providers, uh, that's also really interesting feature that a lot of people have been asking us for. Um, and then, then, then there's many different things in the roadmap that, that Marcelo keeps asking the engineers to build uh, that will be going based on, on just how much demand it is based on each, each feature. Um, but again, the, the, the long-term vision, and we'll always be building towards this, is to create a really, really easy way for people to meet inside of remote spaces, whether they're virtual as in CAD or real as in digital twins, uh, to create and simulate uh, on-site meetings, to get things done, to learn things, to solve problems. Um, you bring this idea of the metaverse to helping humanity like do things, yeah. Were, were there uh, a question I haven't asked you that I should ask or a topic that we should be covering? Um, I don't think so. I mean, the concept is, once, once you've heard me say it 10 times, the concept is pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just, I think that the magic is in how we've made it so simple. You know, it's the, the idea is, is interesting and, and it's, it's easy to make something that's really complicated. But I think that what I'm really proud about is just how easy it is to use super, Supervis. And the idea of, of the way we, we, we monetize, the way we do the pricing for Supervis is that it's um, as if it was video conferencing. So it's a monthly fee per person that can host meetings inside of their, inside of their projects. Uh, there is a reasonable limit on the number of projects you can have in your dashboard, but you can go ahead and expand that as well. Uh, and because we want everyone to go ahead and try it, we give a full feature 14 day trial. So people can come in, use the tool as much as they'd like with full feature for 14 days to really give it a, you know, kick the tires and see if it really does all the things that, in, that I've shown you there. Go to superviz.com, S-U-P-E-R-V-I-Z.com, sign up for a 14 day free trial. 
If you still got questions or you want a one-on-one -on -one demo, uh, you can sign up for that as well with a member of the SuperViz uh, team, including Marcelo. Uh, um, Marcelo, is there anything else that we uh, we should be talking about? No, oh, I think we covered it all. I think it's the the main idea is to get this concept of spatial content, like where you would like to meet that the spatial content is the subject, then supervise is the right tool for that because then you can be anywhere from virtual to reality capture digital twins. That summarizes basically everything we have spoken for the last 50 minutes. Awesome. Uh, uh, Marcelo, thank you. Thanks for being on the show today. Russ, thank you, thanks, thank you yeah, for being yeah. on the show thanks, today. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having us. Always always a good time. Thank you. We, we've been visiting with Superviz co-founder and CEO, Russ Rive, and Superviz head of sales, Marcelo Franco. Uh, uh, we will publish the show in the We Get Around Network forum, and we'll take out all the challenges that we had today. Again, that's... <laughs> My fault with WGAN TV live at five with all the technology we have. When you watch, when you have a supervis experience, it is actually super easy, super fast, and super reliable. Uh, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN TV live.